created this person class here. We've seen it before through constructor on here. It announces itself. We have some properties. We've seen these before as well. First name, last name, age. Get set, get set, get set. I added a field this time just because I wanted a field. I added a method, announce thyself, just because I wanted a method. And then I have this event action. Get got some action. And uh, you can watch the events playlist if you want to learn more about events there. Anyway, th this is kind of all the basic kind of things you would find inside of any sort of built-in type. And then main class down here is empty for now. If you watch any significant amount of my videos, you will see me use uh, tools like the .NET Reflector or Eldasm to see exactly what's what's inside of a uh, a class or an assembly or that kind of thing. So I'm going to write C# -sharp compiler. Please compile main class dot cs, and that generates main class dot exe. Looks like we have some warnings, but no big deal. We still compiled, and then I will generally say eldasm slash out. Let's call it moo dot text. Please give me the disassembly for main class dot exe, which I just generated from the C# -sharp compiler command. Hit enter. And then let's look at moo.txt. You can see moo.txt is full of goodies. Full of goodies. Well, most of this information, everything that starts with a dot, is data. All right? We can't execute this. We can reflect it. We can look at it uh, using reflection, but we can't execute it. The only thing we can execute, I mean, we can't even really execute this. And this tells me, hey, you got a constructor. It's a method. But I can't execute this. It's just telling me that this is a method. And by the way, here's some code. Right? This is what we actually execute. But besides that, all this is just meta information, extra information, sitting there waiting to be analyzed by us via reflection or via a tool like Ildazen like we just did. Okay, otherwise, it just sits there. Now, let me tell you something about your executables. Let me bring the command prompt up here. I'm going to say dir main class dot exe, hit enter. Main class dot exe is an executable. We can execute it, run it. Watch, I'll, I'll, I'll run it. Main class dot exe does absolutely nothing because main is empty. But not only is there executable code in here, but there's all this data. Okay, most of these bytes right here are because there's just so much data. Right? And that data is literally stored in tables. Okay, if you watch my SQL programming playlists, you'll see I do a lot with tables and database tables. And the data just sits there and does nothing. And did you know that your executable has tables in it? Data tables in it? It stores the information about all the types. It stores all the information about the properties and events. And we're going to see all that in just a second. But because all that data exists, we can use tools like Ildasm to analyze our, our code, or we can reflect on it. Okay, we've seen several examples where we used reflection in C Sharp to look at this information as well. Another tool, actually, before I show you the other tool, let me just ildasm main class dot exe, and, and now we get this nice GUI version where you can say, oh, you have this main class, it has a constructor, and it has a main, and we have this person, and it's full of all this other stuff, and look at this, there's the, the uh, getters generated from the properties, and go watch the properties programming play our videos if you want to learn more about that but all this stuff is generated and the reflect or Eldasm is giving us this information you've seen me use the reflector oh it's in c colon backslash c colon backslash reflector you can buy this tool if you want main class dot exe let's reflect main class dot exe oh wow took up a lot of the screen and then here's my assembly and we can poke around again here's main class here's person person has all this stuff click expand methods and we get all the code and look at all that code the compiler generated. So much, so much sugar, so much pixie dust. Anyway, one little example, and it's already written, it's already done. We can use those two tools, but we could certainly write our own reflector, could we not? Or at least we could write a poor man's reflector. So that's what I want to do in this video. Just, In fact, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can beat me to the punch and then come back and see how I do it. I'm not going to do anything spectacular. It's going to be rather simple. I'm going to say var assembly gets assembly, assembly, control dot, using system dot reflection. Get the executing assembly. But you could certainly replace this with like assembly dot load and, and pass a string here if you wanted to be more dynamic, just like the reflector or Eldasm. But I'm going to say, hey, get the executing assembly because I know it's this assembly and this assembly is going to have that thing. And then let's just 
write a little little reflection code here. Console write line assembly dot full name and then let's that's for each uh, type type in assembly get the types and then what's the first thing we should do we should probably console write line backslash t the type name like that and again string concatenation is a poor way if you're doing something like this you should use string builder but I'm just trying to get a little report here of hey here's the assembly it's scratch pad version zero go watch the assemblies playlist if you want to learn about all this stuff but there's two types in there it's person and main class well let's go a little further with that for each uh, field info right remember I told you there's data tables inside of your executable well one of those tables is the field table it gives you all the information about all the fields so for each field info field field in the type dot hey give me the fields okay notice get fields here returns a field info array give me all the fields and let's console right line let's indent twice there the field dot data type is it type field type field dot field type plus the space oh I should use string builder for this field dot name and then uh, let's let's control F5 this and we see hey person has an int32 me field alright very cool well, let's do the same thing for properties for each property info prop info or just, let's just say prop prop in type hey give me all your properties and guess what this looks a lot like the field info one except now we get property infos instead and and uh, console right line uh, you know what we should say right here though the backslash t backslash t let's say fields like that and then I'm actually going to take this in even deeper and then let's say uh, backslash t backslash t is such a terrible way to format but <laughs> properties okay console right line uh, backslash t backslash t backslash t uh, let's see property prop dot Mm, property type plus a space plus prop dot name and then there's a whole bunch of stuff with pro we, we could go further with this I'm not going to but you could say uh, you could say give me the get method and that would return a method info and you could give me the set method and get that info we could get really detailed in here but I'm not going to go that far with it and let's see if that formats oh yeah this is starting to look a little better here's the assembly it has a person person has fields me filled and then the properties string first name string last name in 32 age well we could certainly do this with the methods could we not for each uh, method info method in type hey give me the methods like that and console right line are you feeling it it's gonna look a lot the same as this other one in fact let's do console right line methods like so plus method dot oh, is there a return type plus a space plus method dot name plus parentheses like so and then we could certainly say instead of if it, there's arguments in here or parameters we could say method dot get parameters and then we could we could outline the parameters in here but I'm not going to go that far I think you're getting the idea here of what I'm trying to do. Oh, look at that! That's pretty long there. Look at that. Look at all these methods in there, these generated methods from the compiler and the ones inherited from object. We could certainly use binding. I'll show you that in a video not too far out, how to use binding to eliminate the ones that, that aren't necessarily native or declared inside of the type. But Anyway, hopefully you're getting the idea that main class... Oh, did I not format methods? Let's get that in there. Um, hopefully you're getting an idea that we can use reflection all day long and we could certainly get in here and and uh, if I wanted to write my own .NET reflector and, and uh, try to make money off that and compete, which I would probably fail at miserably, I could certainly do that using reflection. So there you go. There's there's We, we could keep going. We say type dot. Hey, give me all the events. You know, and we could write one of these for all the events. 
And then we would see this event come out. Oh, why not? Don't blink, this will be the fastest code you've ever seen. Man, I wish I could type that fast all the time. I'd be the most productive programmer ever. Events, I, I wanted to get a little bit more involved with them. Give me all the event infos, and then what's the type, what's the name. Tell me, what is the add method? Tell me, what is the remove method? Let's run this, and you can see we have events, system.action. Got some action. Is that not what I named my event here? Don't let it uh, get you too excited. We have the add method, which is add underscore got some action, and the remove method, remove underscore got some action, and, and if you go look at the events playlist, you'll see why we have those things. But anyway, there you go. That's if, if you're bored on a Friday night, nothing to do, write your own reflector.